Welcome back, everybody. September the 26th, Lehman College will hold their first presidential debate viewing party. And joining us, we have the details. He has all the details, and we're going to give it to you. We have Christopher Malone, the Associate Dean and Professor for Lehman College School of Natural Sciences. We welcome you to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having There's me. There's a whole Thank lot you. going on. How do we yeah. get everybody involved and create that enthusiasm that we had in 08? Well, we're going to try. We are having uh, the first of several debate watch parties this evening in the Lovinger Theater here on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start about 7.45. We've ordered 50 pizzas to entice people to come, there you go. fill their, their stomachs. Uh, and then about 8.15, from 8.15 to 9 p.m., we're going to, uh, I'm going to lead the audience through a history of presidential debates uh, in the televised era from 1960 to 2012. Oh. Yeah. And then we'll dim the lights at 9 p.m. sharp and watch the most important reality TV show of American oh. democracy. <laughs> Did you say reality TV? <laughs> well, the original reality TV yeah. show. You know, yeah. debates. Uh, the, 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 f the first televised debate was in 1960 in the television era, and they are, in my opinion, the most important reality TV show and probably the original yeah. reality now, this TV this is going to be the most watched. They said this is a Super Bowl uh, Probably so. Status. You know, they're, they're expecting 100, 100 million. million people. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I think rightfully so. I'd like to see 200 million people watch. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, you know, debates don't necessarily change the dynamic of a race, but they can, and they have in the past. And what I'd like to do with the audience before we start at 9 p.m. is talk about some crucial moments in past debates where mm -hmm. it did turn the tide, and, and, and they have mattered. And besides the spectacle of it, I think that uh, the importance of watching two candidates side by yeah, side no. is very important. How important are those one-liners? Because the, the, the media, yeah. Grabs hold, they grasp hold of that, that one line and they blow it out the next day. Well, I, th I think candidates practice on the sound bite and, and, yeah. and wait for the moment to deliver it. And it is because the next day and the next week, <laughs> those one liners, those sound bites get put on TV. But I think they're, they're, they're indicative of something larger. Um, I'll give you an example. In 1984, after Ronald Reagan debated uh, in the first debate, he looked uh, out of touch. He was trying to add too many details. Yeah. And that's not Ronald Reagan. He's more of the charismatic leader. Mm -hmm. And in the second debate, uh, the moderator asked him, uh, people say you're already the oldest president in, in American history and you seem a little out of touch and at that point he pivoted and he said I won't make uh, the youth and inexperience of my opponent an issue in this race and it was Walter Mondale who was in his mid-fifties at the time yeah. and the entire audience roared and Walter Mondale after the fact said I knew right then that I had lost the presidential yeah, election wow, wow. so that one line in that moment where Ronald Reagan was himself really led to his reelection and he won in a landslide. Yeah, I, I can remember um, someone saying, I know Jack Kennedy. How did Lloyd it go? Benson. Lloyd Benson, 1988, VP debate. Uh, Lloyd Benson was Michael Dukakis's vice presidential candidate. Dan Quayle was George H.W. Bush's vice presidential candidate. And at some point, Dan Quayle was trying to compare himself to uh, John F. Kennedy. Yeah. He said, I have as much experience in, uh, in Congress as John Kennedy did when he became president. And Lloyd Benson, who was much older, turned to him and said, Senator, I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. You know, the, word for word. Yeah, well, I, I'm supposed to know this. But the yes, most yes. interesting part about that is that Lloyd Benson didn't know John F. Kennedy. He knew yes. of him. So he said he was a friend of his, but at the same time, he wasn't actually uh, as close as he might have let wow. on. But no one cared about that. What it really did is, is showed that the VP candidate on the Republican side was inexperienced. But who won that race? Yeah. Well, George Bush did. So yeah. it didn't really matter in the end. And it begs the question, do uh, vice presidential candidates and their debates really turn yeah. the tide? And not much, yeah. not much. How important is fact checking? And I know they're going to yeah. be doing it on the spot probably. Yeah. Well, fact checking, I think, is important after the fact for a, a slice of the electorate, the people who are very informed. I think the important question in this race and this whole entire presidential election season yeah is how much should the moderator do the fact checking? Mm. Um, people gave Matt Lauer a, a lot of grief a few weeks ago when they had the, f the forum on foreign policy between Trump and Clinton. They weren't on the stage at the same time. But he really didn't fact check Donald Trump in some of the things. And the question is, during a presidential debate, is that the moderator's responsibility or the other candidate's responsibility? What do you think? 
I think it should be a little of both. As a matter of fact, in 2012, when uh, Candy Crowley from CNN was moderating the last debate between Romney and Obama, uh, Ra Romney kept talking about Benghazi and he said that you did not call it an act of terrorism for 14 days. Yeah. Candy Crowley actually uh, corrected Romney and said, uh, no, actually the very next day he called it an act of terror. Yeah. And Obama looked at, at, at Candy Crowley and said, could you repeat that please <laughs> for the entire audience? So, you know, everyone plays the referees, yeah, if you will, yeah. and they're trying to get the, the mm. moderator on their side. But I think the fact checking, um, is only important if people pay attention to it after. If yeah. any of the candidates are allowed to go on and on without any, any responsibility, then, then we are all... So you know, what would you like our young people to learn or realize during this debate? Well, I think that uh, I, I started by talking about reality TV. I think yeah. that what young people have to realize, uh, they grew up in not only the television age, but this age of social media, mm -hmm. that that there is more to it than just uh, a television and social media. There are real issues and these individuals, let us hope, uh, prepare endlessly for a 90 minute debate and they prepare endlessly for the most important political office in the country. So I wouldn't take it lightly. That's my message is to watch closely, try to get the substance. If you don't get the substance in the debate, there are so many outlets out there uh, that you can do fact check. PolitiFact does a, a fact checking. The Washington Post does it. Um, if anyone wants to contact me out there, I'm certainly uh, uh, amenable to giving them all kinds of resources. No. But you, you know, it's civic education. You have to educate yourself because you can't expect that a 90-minute debate will do that for you. Yeah, you know, well, a lot of people getting into um, the elections for the first time. You know, what should they do? Which, mm -hmm. Is there a place to go, or is there a website to go to? to learn all about the issues and everything that the, the candidates Ooh. stand for? One website. There's a lot of them. Yeah, there is. I, I think I would start, if I was a young person, I would start with the candidates' websites themselves. There, there are issues buttons on there. You can read oh. about them. And then you go to any news source. Like I mentioned the Washington Post, the New York Times, Politico. Mm -hmm. These news, national news sources are very good in giving background and backdrop to some of the issues. There are nonprofit organizations that do this as well. Um, there are right-leaning, left-leaning organizations, think tanks. The, 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 I think one of the problems, Dr. Bob, is that there's so much information out there that, that young people or anyone yeah. doesn't know exactly where to go. I'm happy to be a guide. Um, I'll give you my email address. Sure. I'll give your, your viewing audience uh, right. my contact information. But I think um, one of the problems is that the, the information is so diffuse that there isn't just one place to go. Mm. Yeah, so. Can I get two more things in there? Um, one thing yeah, is that sure. how important is it to, and we'll probably have to do it fast because they're yeah, trying sure, to wrap sure. me. Um, how important is it to give all your medical information out and um, and get your yeah. release all your tax information. Well, I, really quickly, I, I think um, the medical information issue is uh, a farce in many ways. Uh, we want our presidents to be healthy, but yeah. um, we didn't know as much about our presidential candidates um, way back when. John F. Kennedy was on all kinds of medicine when he was elected. Um, I think what we want to know is whether or not at the point of us electing them, they're stable, they're, they're sane, they're, they're, they're relatively healthy. Mm -hmm. The tax um, ref, uh, returns issue I think is more important, especially for someone like Donald Trump who's a businessman who might have a legitimate conflict of interest. And, and I think that that is more indicative of who these people are in the longer uh, term than yeah. say health. And That's my, my, my opinion. And mm -hmm. finally, who's going to win tonight? <laughs> well, you, I don't, from I, your point of view. I, I, look, I, everyone wants to, to see a debate in terms of a boxing, boxing match, who wins, who loses. I think um, if this does, uh, I'll give you a, a, a very political response. If this is a substantive debate, then we all win. How's that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> gonna I got out of that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Where can we go for more information? Uh, uh, well, uh, you go to the, the Lehman website, uh, mm -hmm. and if you uh, type in Presidential Debates 2016, you'll see our flyer. We start at 8.15 mm -hmm. uh, p.m. in the Lovinger Theater in on campus here at Lehman. If you want to get in touch with me, um, my email address is Christopher.Malone, that's Christopher.M-A-L-O-N-E at Lehman.CUNY.EDU. Uh, phone number 718-960-8206. Um, I'm on Twitter at Malone Chris. So mm -hmm. there we go. We there got we go. it all.
Okay. All right. Everybody show up to this presidential pizza party <laughs> at Lehman College. You entice people by free food. That's right. There's a free dinner. <laughs> Thank you so okay, much. Okay, Dr. Right. Bob. Thank nice you so again. much. You got to okay. come back more often. I'll, We're going to talk be happy politics. To. I'd be happy yeah. to.